Question 7. The following steps were used to analyze a metal ore. So we have an ore of metal that was roasted in a stream of oxygen and a gas with a pungent smell was formed which turned acidified potassium chromate to green. So the pungent smell, the gas that is produced has a pungent smell. It turns acidified potassium chromate to green. Okay, that should leave us thinking. Uh, next, the residue left after roasting was dissolved in hot nitric acid and crystals were obtained from the solution. Now, some crystals were dried and heated. A brown acidic gas um, from nitric acid, definitely here, we'll find our footing, nitrogen 4 oxide. And a colorless gas, oxygen, and a yellow uh, solid remained. The solid was yellow when cold. There are two uh, substances, zinc oxide, lead oxide. This one, when hot, it is yellow. When cold, it is white. Okay, we bring this other one down. Okay, maybe we erase it here and take it somewhere. We bring it here. Lead oxide. This one is orange when hot and yellow when cold. So now we know the cation here is lead. So this is lead oxide. Okay, the yellow solid was heated with powdered charcoal and shiny beads are formed. So you have lead oxide uh, with powdered carbon and that happens, a reduction process occurs remaining with carbon. Okay. So now, we need to go back and fill in other spaces. Um, the O, because of this pungent smell, it must have been having sulfur, which gave rise to sulfur four oxide. It's sulfur four oxide that turns uh, chromate to green. So the, our O, therefore, is lead sulfide. The gas formed when the O was roasted in the air is... Sulfur four oxide. Gas evolved when crystals in night in step three were heated. So the gases, there are two gases, nitrogen four oxide. Consider the analysis we have done above. The other one is oxygen. The yellow solid formed in step 3, we have said this one, oh yes, name, so we will not use the symbols. Lead to oxide. The shiny beads, there we are. Again, I'm going to the formula and we are told to give the, the name. So lead. lead metal now part E the yellow solid the yellow solid uh, from procedure 3 was separated dried melted and the meld electrolyzed using uh, graphite rods uh, let us recall that this was lead oxide Describe the observations made at the electrode. So using graphite electrodes. So we'll have the anode. <coughs> Sorry. Anode which is positive. Uh, we'll have the oxide migrating there. And here 
they will be preferentially discharged forming oxygen gas plus four electrons um, at the cathode making our notes cathode we have lead ions receiving two electrons and what is deposited will be uh, lead metal so we are saying here the description of observations there will be liber liberation of a colorless gas here liberation of a colorless gas that relates uh, other books say rekindle rekindle um, a glowing splint rekindle a glowing splint a glowing splint on the other cathode there will be gray solid deposited write the equation for the reaction that took place at the anode at the anode we have said this is what happens it's in fact here in our notes it is discharged by releasing two electrons to form oxygen gas uh, by giving out four electrons four electrons Yes, that is the equation at the anode. Uh, question F. Some crystals formed in step 2 were dissolved in water and a portion of it reacted with potassium iodide solution. A yellow precipitate was formed. Write ionic equations for this reaction. So we have in solution the cation that is present is lead we are only going to show uh, the main reaction that will occur because the spectator ions uh, they do not participate and so we cannot uh, show them so the other one is iodide how do we write iodide a yes iodide okay it is in solution as they react you get this which is a yellow precipitate Again, maybe we need to sketch here. How are we getting iodide? Valency 2, valency 1, cross 1 here, cross 2 here. You have lead uh, iodide. So the formula is correct as per our equation. Okay. To another portion of the solution, F. So it means F, the solution from F is divided into 3. Sodium hydroxide solution was added drop by drop until there was no further change, meaning until in excess. So sodium hydroxide is in excess. Describe the observations. So a white, uh, a white precipitate. white precipitate is formed which eventually dissolves forming a colorless solution How can we be so sure about this? If this is lead ions, the cations we have here, this is amphoteric. And therefore, as we said, as was discussed in topic one of acid bases and salt, we said the reaction with sodium hydroxide 
uh, a few drops you get a white precipitate and when the sodium hydroxide is in excess there is formation of a complex and therefore dissolve to form a colorless solution that's why we have indicated the final color of the solution there to a further portion of solution f solution from f a piece of zinc foil was added okay a zinc foil we do some site work zinc in solution we have laid <coughs> sorry compare their reactivities so the reactivity series is potassium sodium calcium magnesium zinc iron lead so we are making comparison between lead and zinc so zinc you can see is more reactive uh, more reactive therefore will displace so a displacement reaction will occur zinc will go into solution and lead is deposited so name the type of reaction the reaction is displacement reaction because this reaction involves exchange of electrons there is transfer of electrons you can also call it a redox reaction because you can see here here uh, electrons are lost but here electrons are gained so this is redox reaction or displacement reaction right oh yes ionic equation for the reaction above we have done it on the side work we bring it here uh, metal plus lead the reaction results in zinc ions plus lead metal that is how it is okay